to activate live your life to activate live your life life is one day at a time if you want our mark but tonight let's just take a look at the pledge we'll move over toward the pledge and mother if you don't mind read the first pledge okay and the book is has a series of pledges series of commitment, series of life-changing thinking. Because many people have been in church all their life are not really committed to Christ. They're committed to a building. They're committed to their friends. They're committed to emotionalism. But they're not committed to functioning service. But the first pledge I am a church member. I like the metaphor of membership. It's not membership as in a civic organization or a country club. It's the kind of membership given to us in 1 Corinthians 12. Mm. Now you are the body of Christ, an individual member of it, 1 Corinthians 12:27. Because I am a member of the body of Christ, I must be a functioning member, whether I am an eye, an ear, or a hand. As a functioning member, I will give, I will serve, I will minister, I will evangelize, I will study, I will seek to be a blessing to others. I will remember that if one member suffers, all the members suffers with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. First Corinthians 12 and 26. And I hope tonight we have gained from this lesson, chapter 1. And if you feel that you have met these criteria, then it asks us to sign and date it. Mm. Keyword. Anybody catch the keyword? Keyword is a word that is repetitive within that statement. Uh, Did anybody catch the keyword? I will. Amen. Those two keywords were I will. I will. The two keywords that we close with tonight. One is I. But I alone does not make up the body of Christ. Because yeah. it takes another component. Does anybody at the table know what other component is? Yeah. What would you call, what would you call, Patrice, a group of I people? Patrice? Where do you go? If, if it's a bunch of I's, a group of eyes will turn into a group of what? Not sick. What is it, Randy? Weeds. We have to become eyes that are united. Okay? The pledge is individual. But the work is collective. Yes. Because within the framework, if you have no committed eyes, you will have very few weeds. And that's what causes our churches today to diminish in movement, in ministry, in the work of kingdom building. We are lacking enough strong together eyes like Randy. Enough strong together eyes like Patrice. Enough strong together eyes like Deacon James Griffin. Enough strong together eyes like Yvonne Wheel. Enough strong together eyes like Mother Hayes. Enough strong together eyes like these two babies that come here on Wednesday night, that are growing up in the church, that will learn the functioning of what it is to be a member. They may not understand it now, but they are here. And then, of course, they have preachers like Reverend Billy Ashley. But our eyes can't be anything if we don't unite with we. We're praying, should you be out of church? Should you be in church where you are not united as a we member? 
please consider coming next week and returning as we look further at I am a church member by Thomas S. Ray. So, when these people use this term, I'm a bench member or I'm a, a pew member, uh, we should really pray for them because according to this book, you are supposed to be functioning. No such thing. You can't just sit in the. You can do it, but you're not a part of the um, the church. That's not why you're in it. You're not here just to sit. Mr. Griffin, would you like to address that? So I'm a part of the church. I used to be a taker of the sacred everything. You go out, read the scripture, the word, visit the sick, and others. We're in the community. I joined in 1959. My name always on the road. No, that's that's not the way it works. And there's more regard and respect for the country club and everything else because you're not going to just sign your name. And expect to be a member. It's just, it doesn't work like that. But we treat the church so horribly. And I'm just saying people need to learn. And this is why our churches are in the conditions that they're in. is because we don't know what's required in accordance with God's word. Now, we can make up all kind of rules. And don't wear pink dresses and blue shoes. That kind of dumb stuff. But what, what God requires for us in this church, we don't know it. And that's why we're in the condition that we're in. My understanding is that after 90 days, there has to be a recommitment to God's church. Yes. Yes. 90 days, there has to be a coming down and confessing, I've been in the black. I, 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 I want to come back. And that's when we, as church members, say, yes, come on back. Understand, 90 days is three months. Right. Huh. Right. Add three communions, and yeah. 12, yeah. 12 Sundays. Yeah. Um, 2 Timothy 4 and 18. 2 Timothy 4 and 18. Listen to what it says. It says, but watch, pay close attention. Second Timothy 4, 1 through 8, 2, 2 Timothy 4, 1, verse 5. That's the one I want to key in on. But watch thou in all things. That means that we must be harmless as a dove mm -hmm. and wise Sir. as a servant. Mm -hmm. We must watch all things, mm -hmm. endure your pains, endure your afflictions, mm -hmm. endure your burdens, mm -hmm. endure the challenges of growing beyond beyond a neophyte and move towards a developing strong church member. It goes on to say, in your afflictions, do the work, and that's what you were saying, Deacon Griffin, do the work of an evangelist, which you cannot evangelize <coughs> if you don't know what evangelism is. You cannot tell folk about the value of church members if you yourself don't engage in church membership. And I might as well confess, there are many churches, many churches, where members 
don't really value their membership until it becomes confrontation. Now what does confrontation come? By the rules and regulations of the church. If you're not in attendance within 90 days, here at our church you receive a letter stating that you know you've been active and we give you another two months, I mean another two Sundays to contact the church to say what your intent is. That, that's a total of 10 weeks. If I didn't go to my house in 10 weeks, my wife is going to assume after she calls the morgue, after she calls the hospital, after she calls my friend, that I have abandoned my home. I'm not dead. I'm not sick. I'm not with friends. So I've abandoned my home. To make it plain, maybe I've gone to another level. And folk have scoured from churches and go to another level, another level, another lover, another level, and don't have the courage to say I'm gone. It goes on to say that not only should I look at it from that perspective, but it says in closing, and let me just get this one. What does it say here? Make full proof of thy ministry. Make full proof of thy ministry. Make full proof of your ministry. And our ministry is going back to the key word that we had tonight with functioning, but we should be engaging in service. Whether it's evangelizing, like Mother Hayes said, whether it's a person that's gifted in the kitchen, whether it's a person who resorts to cleaning the laboratory, somebody has a gift of passion. My mother said when she was alive, if you are nothing but a sweet, a sweet street sweeper, you ought to be the best street sweeper there is. What a good dialogue. I'm glad that you wrote it and we got it because it was a viable question. God bless you. Good night. Let's everybody bid them a good night. Good night. See you next week. Good evening, church members. Here we are once again. I'm Pastor E and a portion of the New Prospect Baptist Church as we continue our series of studies. I am a church member by Tom S. Rayner. Tonight we're going to pick up again as we move towards the close of the first outline, I will be a functioning church member. A functioning church member. Active and attractive. Enthusiastic and encouraging. And tonight as we move towards the pledge, we pray that you will come along with us as we read the final portion and leads us to make a beginning commitment. The entire book will challenge you to be committed to Jesus Christ and the work of the ministry. Again, we're going to ask Mother Hayes if she will take us to our pledge. The first pledge, I am a church member. I like the metaphor of membership. It's not membership as in a civic organization or a country club. It's the kind of membership given to us in 1 Corinthians 12. Now you are the body of Christ, an individual <coughs> member of it. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Because I am a member of the body of Christ, I must be a functioning member, whether I am an eye, an ear, or a hand. As a functioning member, I will give, I will serve, I will minister, I will evangelize, I will study, I will seek to be a blessing to others. I will remember that if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And I, Mother Rosary. Our first pledge, our first commitment, 
Although we may not be standing, sitting, or even in proximity of you, we all, through this book, should begin together to realize the importance of commitment, of pledge, of understanding, growth, and development. Shall we bow our heads as we pledge silently? Gracious God, our Father, to our membership all over this country and land, we pray that those that will follow us as we continue in this series, I Am a Church Member, would start with their pledge, their open-heartedness to God, and to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As a recount, our prayer is that you would walk with us and recognize that if you're guilty of being one of church pretenders, you will change. If you've been one of those members that has been just an attender, this book challenges you to change. And if by chance, if the will of God is in your life operating in a positive productive mode, then continue with us as we learn together the value of being a church member. Thus far, we have covered unit number one. I will be a functioning church member. We learn the value of membership, which means I will be necessary. I will be a part of God's whole. We also discover that membership means we are different, but we still must work together. We may be distinguishably different, but we must work together in unity. And finally, we looked at membership means everything we say and do is based on the biblical foundation of L-O-V-E, love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But tonight, we move to another unit. And that unit is entitled, I Will Be a unifying church member. I will be. Key word, I will. That's what it's going to take. Let God's will become our will. Tonight, we're going to ask the Reverend Billy Ashley if he will lead us to the opening portion of chapter 2 as we begin, I will be a unifying church member. Good evening, folks. God desires all Christians to get along. In fact, he's emphatic about it. Jesus was clear when he said, By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. John 13, 35. Did you get that? Mm. Yeah. We will know if we are Christians or not, or not by the way we are who are believers act towards one another. Have you ever been an ugly to an ugly business meeting in a church? Do you think an outsider would be impressed with that Christian behavior she witnessed? Have you ever heard Christians gossip about another, one another? Is that loving one another? Look at your pastor's email box and he'll let you know. I bet some of you would be shocked by what some of the church members say to him. When you become a church, a Christian, God expects you to be part of his church. But when you become part of his church, he wants you to be a unifying presence there. Let's state that a bit more strongly. He demands that you become a mm. unifying presence there. Mm. The evidence is pretty clear. Let's take a look. Wow. 
What a declaration to open up in our unit number two. By this shall all men know you are my disciples. If you have what? Love. 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 Unconditional love. Self-sacrificing love. Let's take a moment and go around the table. Introduce yourself in any brief comments you may have tonight. Tony from our deacon to my right. Good evening. I'm Deacon Curly Holden. This is a good book to look at, to go over, uh, about what God expects us as church members, participating church members, church members involved in love. There's certain things that we do when we love, and that's we care about others, and we're gentle toward others. But consider it toward others. It's helpful. Praise God. I'm Minister Reese. Um, this is a very touchy subject because a lot of us struggle with being unified. But we have to first understand to be unified with someone, we must have love in our hearts. And it starts with love. Don't forget that key word, love. Love for one another. Mm -hmm. Yvonne Williams. The subject says, I will be a unifying church member. And unify simply means to make or become united. Uniform or whole or bring together. So... For me to be a part of this body, I have to have that type of spirit to want to be a part of, to come in, to work, to work with other people, not be selfish, be willing to uh, be participant, and so that there will be harmony, which stems like whatever we said from the love. If you don't have the love of God in you, you're not going to understand unity. You're not going to be able to unify, and you will not be a part of a unit that's working. Or for one cause, and that's salvation and winning souls, because you don't have the, the main thing. But that, that, that thing is love, and that's the love of God. I'm Flora Ray, and the question that came to me is, what does unified mean? Mm -hmm. And in order for a Christian to get along, we must have faith and love. Mm. Well, tonight, when I leave this session tonight, I am to pray that I will be able to be able to participate and do my part and serve, worship, give, and all the things that show the church and God that we are united. I am united in what I do for my church. I'm James Griffin, and now I come to say that love is the abundance of things. Um, in order to be united with one another, you have to bind. And as you bind together, you know each other, to uh, trust each other, to believe in each other. You begin to study together, learn how the Word of God tells you how to treat your fellow man. Not to hate your fellow man. If your fellow man do something to you, go into him and confirm and explain to him what he did and see how to celebrate and be loved. But um, we're also to learn how to serve each other. Not just somebody to serve you, but you serve them. And you find you serve them to get joy out of serving you. You have to for unity, coming back together, for love for one another. All right, very good, everybody. Let's go back to Reverend Billy Ashley, who led this portion, and ask him this portion. Being an ex-athlete playing football, you have to be on one accord. That's unity in the secular sense. The quarterback calls for a play to be run, 
Everybody knows which way he goes and what he's supposed to do. That's the same thing in the church. You have to be unified. When the quarterback, the pastor, gets information from God, you have to move when the pastor says move. That's it. Wow. Here we are. Unification. What I termed in my book, what I got out of this first outline, was the word kind of a precursor, unconditional. It's very necessary for every Christian to pray that God will transition them from selfish love to unconditional love. That kind of love that pardons folk even though you know you're right. That kind of love that says it's self-sacrificing. It's expecting nothing in return. Jesus so loved the world that he gave his life for you and I. Here's one thing that I discovered. When you become a Christian, and this was in the third paragraph, God expects you to be a part of his church. It is inexcusable to say you're united with Christ with the membership and attendance that's unacceptable. Many people believe they can get church from couch Baptist, from bedside believers church. But the Bible teaches, fail not to assemble yourself together, for this is right. And the only way we can unify is to be in each other's presence and to make mistakes that can be corrected. You grow, at least I've grown, from mistakes. I saw that portion. They talked about emails that come to pastors. I'm not in that age with people that email me. I'm in that age where people slip notes under my door. But you know what I've discovered? In slipping the notes, as a pastor, I know everybody's handwriting. <laughs> to activate and live your life. To activate and live your life. Life is one day at a time.